Hey guys, so I'm just gonna do a live here because I know most of you guys are sleeping at the moment given the time difference, but I'm just gonna do this anyway because I just finished my interviews, just posted my Instagram stories, and I've had such a good time that I wanna talk about it and save it for you guys to listen to when y'all wake up. So what happened during the interview? I basically sat in an, a room full of women and it was filled to the brim, but I was as Singapore is all the way at the back. So I was one of the last people to really go in the group that I was in. And essentially every single girl that came out was positively joyous. Like they came out radiating, they were so happy. Obviously a lot of women came in, they were the into the interview being nervous anxious i mean this is the defining factor of who gets to be in top 21 so of course everybody is you know pitting this ex this moment their entire existence as of right now in the competition and obviously there's a lot at stake so naturally people were nervous i wasn't nervous actually didn't want to think about it too much because I think when you think about something like that it definitely gets to your head and you just kind of get in the way of yourself so I don't want to think about it didn't do any research some of the women that came out told us that it was essentially about your own bio and if you go to the Miss Universe app and you look at the delegates profile you will see their bio and you will also see the three things the fun facts about them so essentially, they're going to ask you about your fun facts. Uh, I wrote that I can sing like a Disney princess and they took me up on my challenge. And so there were two panels, one panel with four judges, the other panel with another four judges, and you switch out after four minutes. In between that four minutes, there will be a bell that rings and that is to tell you that you need to switch over. So the first place that I went to, they asked me about what I was wearing because I want to show you guys what I'm wearing right now. It is a statement piece. I was actually very nervous about this piece because this doesn't really hold up very well. Sometimes it kind of droops down. So I was st stroking. I was literally doing this outside the interview before I went in because I wanted to make sure that it stood out. It, it gave me wings. I want to come in with wings. I want to shine. I want to dominate, you know? So they asked me about my outfit and what it meant. And I told them that it signified my Asian heritage. This reminded me of the heritage houses in Singapore that were preserved. And at the corner of the roof tiles, they have these things that jut out, the tiles that come off. And so I told them about that. I told them about my collar and the collar looks very reminiscent of a chong sam, which is a traditional Chinese um, outfit that you would wear, or women would wear, especially during Chinese New Year. And yeah, it's just a homage to who I am as a person. I am Chinese by descent. So they asked me about that and then they started talking about my creative life. Uh, why am I in the creative industry? How did that come about? They asked me about um, my reading because they actually, I, I don't know how they found this out, but they found out that I read 27 books in 2020. I think maybe I might have written in the bio. I, I completely forgot. So they said, oh yeah, so you read this many books. Uh, how do you figure out which book to read next and I told them about Goodreads and then one of the judges squealed. She literally went, oh, oh my gosh, um, just because I'm sure she's an avid reader herself and yeah, I told them I use Goodreads to bookmark the books that I want to read. I also listen to podcasts and if there's any good recommendations in the podcasts, then I will plug that in and that's how I pick out my books. and. I just love how excited and engaged all the judges were. They were there for us. I could feel that. And I think that is one reason why all of the women came out of the interview feeling like they were loved, feeling like they were seen. And it was an all women panel. Absolutely groundbreaking to have an all women panel because women understand women they understand every facet of what makes us tick why we love fashion so much why we love to educate ourselves why we want to stand out from the crowd in 
every sense of the word. I'm not just talking about aesthetics, I'm also talking about standing out in terms of the work that we do, the advocacy that we do, what do we stand out for, stand up for. So yeah, they also asked me about, um, hmm, what else did they ask me? <laughs> they asked me a lot because I was actually talking really fast. Like this is the speed in which I was walk I was talking in. And so making sure that they were able to ask me as much questions as possible, making sure I was able to speak with enough information to give me a fighting chance as a contestant because I know for Singapore this is a huge deal. This closed door preliminary interview is what is going to set me apart from everybody else and I wanted to make sure that I could convey as much of myself to them as possible. So uh, what else did they ask? They asked about um, me you know, being accomplished enough to try on a lot of different things, culinary school, but then also modeling. And they asked me how that came about. And essentially I told them that um, I've been a very independent person since young. And even you know, my mom would, would kind of be taken aback by some of the statements I made because when I was young, I would tell my mom, I wanna drive my own car someday. Fun fact, I don't have a driver's license because Singapore is just so efficient with public transport. But I remember telling her that when I was really young and she was like, I don't want you to go away. Why would you want to do that? She's, she's a very traditional uh, stay in the family one unit type of mother. So yeah, it took her back. But I just told them that I've always been independent since young. It's something inherent of me to want to be able to explore. And then, ah, I remember the first question they asked me was, what, what makes you beautiful? Or what makes you define beauty? Something like this. And then I told them, beauty is in the everyday things. Beauty is in the people that I meet, the experiences I have, and being able to come into this competition. Beauty is not just the women that I meet, but it's the staff, it's the judges, it's the whole experience of feel, feeling supported by everybody. And that's my answer. <laughs> I'm giving you literally everything that they asked me and I'm trying to rack my head over the things that um, they, I, I answered. So that was the first panel. Guys, literally that was just the first panel. In four minutes, we went through all of that. And then the second panel switched over and then they asked me to sing because they were like, girl, you wrote, down, you wrote down in your bio that you're a Disney princess and you can sing like one. So why don't you sing like one? Um, there's no way you're getting out of this <laughs> without singing. And I was like, don't worry, I I've come prepared. And I actually sang um, the same song that I sang at um, my live with Miss O for uh, the one of the sponsored live Instagram stories we did last week. So I did that and then there were people on the side as well. So I wasn't just addressing the four judges in front of me, I was also singing to the people on the side and I think it's very important to try and acknowledge every single person in the room so I did that and then they asked me okay so who is the Disney princess that you would want to embody for a day and I told her oh girl that's so easy I was like it's so easy it is Mulan the very fact that Mulan you know fights for her family fights for her nation is able to go against the grain and break barriers in society you know her being a, a a woman and people telling her that she's just a woman therefore she has the sole purpose of getting married and that was it but she decided no she's gonna fight for her country and i said i really resonated with that and then i also told them that actually i really wanted to cut my hair to this length and i actually asked my directors if it was possible that I would do that and it is a risk we all know if you're going into a competition a lot of people like to do the va va voom big big locks the the huge eyeshadow and the big hair and I decided look I don't want to do that I want to keep it simple I want to work with what I already have and what I have is straight long silky hair and I don't mind cutting it short <laughs> So I essentially told them, you know, if you remember in the Mulan movie, she actually chops her hair off with a samurai sword. It's actually a very iconic scene. 
and I told them I wanted to chop my hair off. I wanted to be that warrior that would fight for my country. And that is essentially what I'm doing right now here with you two, with you guys. So that is my answer. And then what else did they ask? Oh, they asked me about Asian hate and how I feel about Asian hate. And I told them that I come from a country in Singapore where it is um, multicultural, multiracial, and therefore we don't face the same issues in my country. And it makes me really upset that this is happening. And I think it starts from the very fact that you are labeling something bad and putting a race to it. That is the problem. And we should always just celebrate the differences that we see in one another and uh, that's something that I see in Singapore. We have Indians, we have Europeans, we have Americans, we have Chinese, we have Malays, we have everybody under the sun. And I, I learn a lot from that. I learn a lot from Singapore. Um, you, as you all know, I actually was born in the Philippines, but having moved in a new country allows me to see with fresh eyes. So that's essentially what I said. Uh, there was another question. I can't remember right now, but there was another, oh, there was another question about what I wanted to do in the future or what was the biggest ambition that I wanted to pursue. And I told them that I work in the creative industry and I really want to try and champion the creatives. I want to create a collective and bring about, um, musicians, dancers, artists together to create events and experiential interactive events. And that is essentially what I want to do for Singapore because I feel like we typically go through all the nice places and we do the same things again and again and again. And it's just really nice to kind of broaden our perspective a little bit and work with freelancers because Freelancers do a lot of work for us and we have so much talent in Singapore that's totally underutilized. We look at Singapore as this founding father for, not founding father, sorry. We look at Singapore as this place, a haven for the tech industry, the, the medicine field. We've got you know finance and logistics shipping and we don't necessarily champion all the creatives that do the other things. So that was my answer, guys. I am surprised that I managed to cover all of that in eight minutes because four four diba. I really did speak a lot. <laughs> I can't believe it. Now that I'm telling you guys this, I don't know how long this live is running for. We'll see. But obviously I condensed my answers, no? But that's essentially what happened. Um hi guys, so thanks for writing to me. Amanda is actually in the closed door interview right now. Thailand is after Singapore. We went by al alphabetical order. That's why she is in the closed door interview. And I think she's going to do amazing. I already told her what they typically ask anyway. Um, love from Thailand, Philippines. Hi, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in. I can't believe you guys are all awake. Isn't it like 4 a.m. right now? Guys. Your support is so extreme. I love it. We're going to do our national costume very soon. And that is happening in a few moments. I haven't had lunch yet. But it's okay. I'm kind of like on a high right now. I have a lot of adrenaline. I can feel it coursing through my body. Actually, I was shaking. When I was singing, I was shaking. I wasn't nervous. But like for some reason, when I was singing, I started... Ugh. <laughs> But yeah, we're going to do our lunch at 5 p.m. And then after that, we are going to prepare for national costume. So I will see you guys soon. Stay tuned because it's happening. And I'm going to close this up because I think I've been talking too much. But thanks, guys. Asians represent. I'm so glad to be here and love you guys all.